This week on 3D Archery, I'm out in Monroe Chester Sportsman's Club in Chester, New York. Hey everybody and welcome to 3D Archery. This week, I am all by myself. And, make things worse, I forgot my GoPro at home, so can't share the close-ups of my shots. I'm out here at the Monroe Chester Sportsman's Club in Monroe, New York. I've been here before, and it's 4th of July weekend. This is about the only shoot in the area, so thought I'd come out and have some fun. I'm going to change things up. When I shoot today, I'm just going to talk to you about different things. It's just going to be a babbling session. I'm shooting my gorgeous absolutely gorgeous wood grain that is 1967 Ben Pearson Colt 38 pounds left-handed 62 inch I'm using my normal arrows these are gold tip traditional 600s All right with a 200 grain point 5 inch feathers 4 inch straight I am shooting a glove and I might switch from a tab from time to time because we're, we're talking about things we're gonna do that all right so kick back enjoy and come on and join me on a nice little Sunday morning Chester New York having fun doing 3d archery come on let's go forgot my GoPro at home yeah sorry guys Got an eight. Not bad. All right, let's go to number two. I shot from the white. He said the yellow's trad, though. The yellow's just too close, so I shot from the white. I agree. Strange cutters. Hey, <laughs> sweet shot right there. I right, got a bear about 30 yards out. He's out there. Ooh, man, what a drop. All right, I got a Stegiosaurus about 15, 18 yards. Using this, 15 yards is 12 inches. All right, no, 15 yards is 15 inches, oops. All right, I'm gonna put my arrow in the leaves just underneath them. Let's see what happens. Not bad, not bad. I'll take that any day of the week. All right, everybody, here we are. You know, one of the biggest things I hear people talk about incorrectly on GAP is I don't want to have to know exactly the distance in order to hit my target. Okay, you're right and you're wrong. You are right. And that in order to hit that bullseye, or to have an increased chance to hit that bullseye, the more accurate you are in your yardage estimation, the better your shot will be. All right? You can always be in areas. Now, how long does it take to estimate range? 18 to 20. I even thought about that. I'm big into range estimation. I think everybody should do it. Because, you know, this is my favorite. The guys that shoot traditional, instinctive, you know, I love Rick Welch's line. 
How far is it? Don't know, don't care. But then when you make the shot, you tell me, I shot this deer at 28 yards. Wait, if you don't know and you don't care, how'd you know it was 28 yards? So even though you're saying you're not, you are, you are guesstimating range. All right. This range, I need to be about 12 inches low. All right, I set this bow up to hit at 30 yards, pretty much point on. So my trajectory's up high and it drops like a rock after 30. I'm gonna put my arrow right around the top of that kneecap and I should be close to the bullseye area if I do everything right. So let's see how it goes. Hey, not bad. That's why I like how I shoot. I like gap. It tells me what I have to do. I, my mind relaxes when it knows what it has to do. I can shoot instinctive, but in the back of my mind, there's always those questions. Am I right? Am I wrong? Does this feel right? Does this feel wrong? Things like that. That's why I like gap. I, I enjoy shooting instinctive too, but gap just calms my mind. Not saying one's better than the other, because I you've seen Jeff Krug. Jeff can shoot with anybody, instinctive. All right, it's whatever works for you. All right, let's go up, take a look, and see how we did. All right, everybody, if you do come here, one, friendly people. But two, they don't use coarse marker arrows net. Orange forest and marks on the trees, and you'll see them. One down there, one over there. I see you. One. Two, three, four, five. So you just keep your eyes on the orange paint and you'll be fine. All right, everybody, here we are in the next target. Javelina. Ten yards. Now, the other thing you got to know, which really helps, is to know your comfort zone. Where you can shoot without thinking, without worrying. Um, Grizzly Kent calls it one of the five C's, confidence. Well, confidence comes from that comfort zone. You know what you gotta do, you know you can do it. Just knowing you can do it, that's a big deal. I'm telling you, once you know you can hit the target, you, you, it becomes one, much more fun. And I can't say easier, but it is. 10 yards, I gotta be 12 inches low. All right. Avelina. Here's the worst part. He's so close, I can actually see the rings. And I have really, my vision's gone downhill. All right. I'm going to put it, I'm figuring a, uh, about a foot is probably to the base of his foot. A foot at foot. Not bad, got a 10. Should have had the bullseye, but looks like I was an inch up. All right, let's go take a look and see how we did. And by the way, I hit my nose. Eee. Got a little Catalina. 15 to 18 yards. Ooh, my arrow rotated. 15 yards, 15 inches. I shot totally instinctive on that. <laughs> Not bad. I got at least an eight. All right, boys and girls, I got a warthog. Now, if you're competing, know the rules inside and out. Learn their distances. If you're shooting for fun, you don't like where the stake is, move. All right, make it a little more fun. Just don't do nothing silly like me and Jeff do. Mainly Jeff. I follow the rules. <laughs> All right, warthog about 20 yards. Need to be about a foot low. I'll put it around the base of his foot. See what happens. First, let's get the skeeter off me. All right, clear the mind. Not bad. Bad release. Seen a little kick in there. Got another eight, just outside the 10. 
All right, not bad, shooting pretty good. All right, let's go on to the next one. All right, everybody, here we are on the next target. Now, brings us to a good question. And a lot of people ask this. How do you compensate for shots up or downhill? I don't. Unless it's a very steep hill. Trajectory is still trajectory. My trajectory on this plane is the same as this plane. Now, when you start talking higher, farther distances, yes, but anything with the 20 yard range, I don't really worry about it. All right, we have a leopard or a jaguar, I don't know which. I'm not a botanist. All right, he's about 20 yards out, maybe a little bit more, slightly uphill. But here's the thing, he's uphill, right? You see him. Target's in line with my shoulder. So it's just like shooting indoors. So the hill, the uphill does not really matter. Now that I said that, I'll probably blow it. All right, 20 yards, 12 inches. If I put it right about his knee, I should hit him where I want, maybe a little lower. I think the target's there. We'll put it down here. Let's see what happens. Nice in line, a little left, but it's exactly in line where I wanted. I didn't compensate at all. All right, I just blew the shot. So don't worry about uphill, downhill stuff, unless it's farther range, all right? The 20 yard range, it don't matter much. That's just my opinion. All right, join me on the next target, will you? All right, I have a boar, minimum of 25 yards out there. Now, I don't care if you shoot an instinctive gap or what, farther you are away from your target, uh, the less accurate can it be. 25 yards, about six inches, he's slightly downhill. It's so little, it doesn't matter. All right, let's see how we do. Six inches, huh? All right, let's put it just below his belly. Ooh, dropped low, but I went a little lower. I was like, that didn't feel right. So, let's see if I can compensate. Because I hear people there and I see people there. That was on his belly, and that was a sweet shot. So who blew it? I did. I'm going, I didn't feel right. Trust your gap, Gregory. All right, hoo hoo. That's 30, at least. Slightly downhill. Yeah, it's gonna affect it a little, but I don't think much. Um, this bow will affect a lot more because of how I set my point on. He's out there, boy, that's a good shot. Now the other thing, if you're gonna compete, you gotta learn where the bullseye is. Um, I really don't know, but I always try to figure right behind the front leg, centerish in the chest, but you know, closer to the front leg. That's the general area I try to shoot for. I'm not a point shooter yet. I haven't gotten that good like Jimmy Blackmon. I mean, he can pick a little point and hit it over and over. I'm an area shooter. And right now my area, oh, maybe six inches. But I'll work on it. The biggest thing I'm going to tell you that I think if you're going to shoot instinctive or gap, a bow that's cut two or past center. Why? Because I don't care if you shoot instinctive or not, your subconscious mind, if you shoot instinctive, your conscious mind, if you shoot gap or anything else, sees that arrow. And if you know Archer's Paradox, it is not the arrow flexing, by the way. I hate that. People that think it is, you're wrong. Archer's Paradox only happens to bows, not cut to center. So when I draw, my arrow actually doesn't point at my target. So when I do my gap shooting, my arrow's not where I want it to hit. It's actually off to the to left, and it actually shoots slightly to the right. All right, so if you're looking, I mean, you want to get good. To me, personal opinion, doesn't mean a whole lot. Center cut bow, which I have none of. All right, now that I'm done babbling, see if I can pull this shot off. I'm going to put it, it's pretty much point on, right by his antler, I think. Let's see what happens. When I say right by his antler, I mean height-wise. Yeah. <laughs> 
hey, that was sweet. Right where I wanted it too. Why? My mind was clear. I tell you, my mind was blank. All I did is look where I wanted it. It's point on. So the, the arrow and everything lined up. All right. Probably an eight, a little high, I guess. But I don't care. I'll take this shot any day. Now let's go take a look. All right, everybody. See my shot down there? This is a good 25 to 28 yards. Slightly downhill doesn't mean much. Um, this is a cool shot just in the fact that there ain't much target. <laughs> Don't have much room to play. Um, I think I'm shooting from the farther stake. The guy said the colors. Looks like blue is traditional. It's about maybe 10 yards closer. But I don't care. You know what? I'm not good. I really am not. But uh, I do like to challenge. So 27, I'm gonna, 27 is going to be pretty much point on. I'm going to put my arrow. I can see the insert. I'm going to put it right on the spine the spine and the insert. Now, as you know, I shoot gap, but I don't. I really shoot split vision. It's the same thing to me. It's just where your point of focus is. Mm. They got a cowboy shootout going on today. Let's see what we do. Bazinga! Girl! Man! That's why I love archery. Shots like that. You know, when I first started 3D archery, my goal is just not to miss. Then, my goal is to hit the target. Then, it's like, get closer. My goal now is points. Good points. I want a minimum of eight. I'll take fives. They happen. But, let's see. See my velocity raptor. Now, if you're learning distance, two ways to do it. Straight line, looking at it, or you can measure the ground. You know at 10 yards, and you just multiply it out. But the best way to me is buy one of these. Don't use it until after you take your shot. Take your shot. I called it 25 to 28. <laughs> 31 yards. And that's sweet. Might be a 10. All right. I'm happy now. Let's go down and take a look. All right, boys and girls, there it is. Now, if you remember, I called it out between 25 and 28, but I said I'd shoot a point on, and my point on's 30. And that's how it's where it hit where it hit. It wasn't luck. I shot point on because it's close enough, and I figured it'd be in. That, my friends, is a 12 right there. That is why I love archery. All right, shooting pretty good. Going on to the next target. I hope you're having fun just like me. Now, <laughs> shooting from the white stick again. Don't matter. Blue stick's maybe 10 yards shorter. There's a gator. It's gotta be 50. I don't know what my gap is for 50. I measured it for 40, and it's three feet. This is... And the problem is with this, I got that tree overhanging on me. So, Oh my goodness. I'm gonna try it from here and then I'll shoot it from the blue, for real. Here we go. Yeah, I'm gonna hit the tree. I'll try one more. I went just below the tree. Now I'm gonna put a little higher. The tree branch hanging over. That's where I put my arrow. <laughs> All right. Take my real shot. I think that might be a pretty darn good shot, too. I put the laser rangefinder. 48 yards. I got a 10. Second shot, I know, but still, 48 yards, a 10. I didn't take the one from the blue because I knew I wasn't going to beat that. And as you can see, there's two arrows because it's all rocks back here. So I. I got lucky. All right, here's the next target. And, uh, bear. Oh, I didn't even think about distance. 
18, maybe 20. Uh, bears like these are hard for a lot of people because there's very little room left to right. And if you're a traditional archer, most of your problems are left to right, not up and down. Um, just work my form and I should be able to get them. Now, I told you my point on is 30 yards. Why that? You know, why is an arbitrary number? Um, dabbled in the IBO, did some regional shoots, did really well. And I want to try a couple of nationals so I can get my butt kicked by D. Wayne Martin and them. And in my class, the farthest target's 30 yards. And you know, as farther away you get, the harder it is for you to keep your accuracy. So my logic is if I put my point on at 30, it's the easiest to aim, less for me to think about. So that's why I have my point on at 30. All right, see a bunch of holes in them. I'm gonna try to put mine in there. If it's 20 yards, 18 to 20-ish, gotta be about a foot low. Let's see what we do. Wow, dropped a little lower than I thought. So, let's see, maybe it's farther than that, huh? Yep. So, uh, zoom in so you can see the first shot. We'll talk about it. Oops, wrong way, dummy. All right. You can see the first shot's low. Down low again. There you go. First shot's low. My second shot, I put my arrow on the fletching of the first one, and that's where I hit. So that was my adjustment. So I wonder what the range really is. Remember what I said, range estimation. It's just that, an estimate. You're going to be off. The whole goal is to minimize how much you're off. Twenty-four. So he's a little farther than I thought, and that's why the first one went down low. All right. Size of the target does um, fool you in distance. Now, obviously, got me there. That's right. Didn't miss. Doing good. On to the next one. All right, I got a baboon out there. Sort of like laughing at me. Um, it's actually a pretty nice shot in the fact that there's a tree behind it. <laughs> um, 10, 18 yards. All right, let's see what we get. Oh, I can actually see the bullseye. I want to be about six inches below him to a foot. Oh man, screw that up. All right, got a five. Life is good. Yeah, I need to go lower. That's right, I'll live. Hey everybody, here we are, target 17. You know, the thing I love the most about archery is the variety. Um, people use all different types of equipment, shoot all different ways, do so many things different but yet they're still effective and they have fun. And that's what I love about it. I'm not one of these elitists that think there's only one way, you gotta do it this way. I've seen people do stuff that's not supposed to work and they make it happen. And I do one of them. My stance is feet together. Man, everybody, oh yeah, that's not the proper. It works for me, dude. That's all I can say. You know, target archers are, they'll claim there's variety, but I don't see much because they're all using the same equipment. You know, they go, yep, yeah, their stabilizer is different. It's still a stabilizer. Right? I mean, just because it's named different, made a little different, still stabilizer. Well, we're all the same, but we can shoot split finger, three under, instinctive gap, string walking, etc. That's what I love. I love seeing people do what they do and how they do it. And I really couldn't care less how you do it, as long as you're happy with your results. So with that bad one done, I'm going to show you how I, I shoot. So here's my target. You see it uphill. The first thing you do is I find a place to stand. I put both my feet together. Yes both my feet together. I look at my target, estimate range. This one's about 25 yards, 23 to 25. That tells me my gap at 25 yards, my gap is six inches. This is slightly uphill. It is a Wolverine. I try to ascertain the target. Now the one thing I don't do is I don't look at all the stuff around it. Because I found if you look at all that stuff around it, I think about, see that branch? Oh, I gotta make sure I don't hit that branch. You'll hit that branch. The only thing in my mind is where I want the arrow to go, the target. All the rest is superfluous. I know all I, if I want to hit that thing, all I got to do is make my shot. 
All right, so I'm here. I rest the bow on the inside of my leg. I knock my arrow, which I already did. I get my grip on the string and the bow. Make sure I get my back straight. I put my thumb on my uh, pinky finger like that. I go slightly above, stare where I want it to go. And right now while I'm looking at my target, I'm looking where I want the arrow to be. I'm looking at the target, but now I see where I want the arrow to be. Hit my anchor, hold, and let go. And that's how I shoot. Now with all that talking, man, I was highly distracted. No excuse, but I still hit it five points. All right. Anchor, thumb, under ear, middle finger to mouth, feather touches nose. Why do I hold it? I got that from Rick Welch. That's my mom, my mind calmed down. Let's try it again. Hey, hey, that was the shot I wanted. See, it was in my mind. Second time I quit doing that. Shot much better. All right, so that's my shot cycle. It's real simple. When I let go, I don't do anything. I just, I let my arm go totally limp. I don't do that, that thing. I just let it fall. So my anchors are here, here. When I let go, I try to keep the back tension and I just, my hand just goes limp. I like that. I don't do no forcing. All right, let's go on to the next one. All right, everybody, I'm showing you up here in the target. First one where I was talking and I'm trying to think in my head while I'm shooting things I need to cover and tell you. That's why I went here. Second one, I sort of blew you guys off. My apologies. And I got a 10 spot. Boys and girls, when you shoot, clear that mind. No thoughts. You know, any thought in there is taking away your concentration. You can only do anything at 100%. So if you're trying to do two things, Something's being taken away from, being degraded. Clear your mind. Focus on the target. Don't be thinking, oh, anchor don't feel it. Anchor don't feel it. Draw down. You draw down until you hit where you need to be and you don't think. If you're thinking, you're getting in trouble. All right, everybody, here we are. Target uh, 18. I'm actually sitting down. There's a stump. And up in the hill, basking in the sunlight, is a beautiful fox. So got to ruin his day. Uh, I don't sit from the shooting much. This is cool. Um, when I shoot, my big thing is get my shoulders in line and my release. And after that, it's all pretty much downhill. All right, let's see what we got. Got him. Woohoo! Lucky shot. All right. Doing good. Just sitting down is just not my way to shoot. Nothing personal. Just, just not my way. All right. Let's go to the next one. All right, everybody, I'm gonna show you my shot cycle from a distance, okay? Now, you won't be able to see my feet, but you get the general impression. Because the other one, you couldn't really see it that well. Here's my stake. I get my feet touching it. I rest the bow on the inside of my leg. Get my general information. Got my distance. <clears throat> now, while I'm knocking, I'm thinking about that. Look at it again. You know where it's 20 yards, 12 inches. <coughs> Excuse me, 20 yards, 12 inches. So I know where I gotta be. I get a nice hook. I get my grip where it needs to be. Raise my bow. And how I draw is with my hips. I pull my hips back. Anchor. Nice little shot. All right, hopefully the hand went back there. I don't know if it did, so let's try it again. I'll shoot a second one just to let you see my shot cycle again. That was a bullseye. Yeah, baby. And you know what's hand there. All right, and that's my shot cycle from the side. All right, next target. Um, I am shooting from the white stake, which is definitely compound. There's that little coyote, 25 yards out. He's out there. You know, it's cool. I like the longer distances, because it forces you to really focus. Um, see how we do? So 25 yards need to be about six inches low. <laughs> now 
not bad. You know, I like the chorus because it's forced me to do my long shots and I'm getting it in there. Yeah, it was an eight, a little high, but you know what? I'll take it. It's not a miss and if I miss, there's nothing behind them. So now I just gotta get my arrow and keep on going. All right, remember how I said I thought I shot a little high? Well, I got up here and to my surprise, yeah, 25 yards on a coyote, six inches, and I put it in a 10 ring. Man, if I could do that all the time, I'd be awesome. But I don't. I am very happy with that shot. All right, everybody, here we are, next target. You know, talk about courses. Um, I was at Water Kill, and the guy that set up the course, he had the perfect name for this type of thing. This is an IBO type shot. And in the IBO, you know, nothing against them. I understand what they're for. You can't have any obstructions. And the guy called it a bowling alley shot. All right, let's see how we do. 20 yards, a foot. A little low. Eight, I might have clipped a 10. And there's a turkey. See the turkey? Yeah. He's behind the target. Little low. Eight. I might have clipped a tent. And it... All right, here we go. This is a nice little shot. Once again, like I said, bowling alley. Wide open. The double. These are big targets. You know, big targets throw off your range estimation if you use line of sight. But if you use the ground, a little more accurate. Um, A little more than 20 in the first one. My guess is about 30 plus in the second one. So first one's 20, about 20 yards. So I gotta be a foot low. Not bad, a little low. That far one's no joke. 30 plus yards. Gonna drop it down in on it. Oh, over his back. I mean, just barely. Got him. Well, since I gotta walk down there and get my arrows anyways, see if I can hit him again. There we go, good shot, good shot. So we got my big miss. Woohoo! That was fun. All right, let me get my one out of the deer and go search for the last one. All right, here I am in the next target and I'm right down from the pistol range and you can just hear him plugging away. A lot of people don't like that, they say it's distracting. Doesn't bother me. Um, makes me focus. Downrange is a turkey. 15 yards. You know, if you watch my videos, you know I always hated turkeys. And the reason it is, they're so small. I didn't have no room to play. But uh, once I, since I got control of my shot cycle, doing much better. I don't worry about them now. All right. Yeah, about 15 yards. So I got. I'm gonna put it right at the base of his feet. Let's see what happens. A little high. Now, one thing I'll say, back tension. All right, I'll shoot again while I'm babbling. I've learned to really get good back tension. I mean, just insane back tension. And when I don't, I pluck, and that's when I go left to right. So that's always a good indicator for me. I'm telling you, back tension is so, so important. Christmas music. All right, all right, let's try it again. Not bad, plucked it a little time. That's all right, my right, last one. I just want you to enjoy the, the pistol shot.
two in the same spot, baby. <laughs> All right, on to the next one. All right, here we are, next target. There she is up close, pronghorn deer. You see where the bullseye is. Yes, I know it's cheating. Probably the best shot of the day. That's what it looks like to me. All right, let's bring it in a little bit. Let's see how that works. <clears throat> Now, uh, like I said, I am shooting from the compound stake because there's only one stake behind me, and that's the red one. Blue one's a good five, eight yards closer. Uh, estimate 25 yards. I like this shot. Yeah, it's a bull and alley shot, and there's nothing in the way, but it's not a broadside. I like quartered shots from time to time. All right, I know one from shooting this many times, that little white section of the body, that's generally where the bullseye is. All right, 25 yards means I got to be six inches low. Get a nice hook, back straight, body in line. And I shot him in the butt. Try that again. Oh, I know why. Okay. better shot. All right. I like that shot. Fun shot, 25 yards, no misses. Means I'm getting better. On to the next one. All right. After I turn the camera off, I go, you know what? Let me do one more. First shot, second shot, third shot's in the bullseye. Why couldn't I do that on camera? <laughs> All right. On to the next one. All right. So look at that, nice little shot, mountain lion uphill slightly, uh, I'm guessing 20 yards. You know, one thing I, I read a lot, people claim they have, or say they have, I shouldn't say claim, um, is target panic. And I've never suffered from it, and I've always wondered why. And I attribute it to the service because they drilled into me how to approach to shoot a rifle. Very set, very specific. And I took that. I was shooting this long before I was in the service. But I was shooting for giggles. But when I started back up, I took that approach and I applied it to this. I have steps. You know, like I, I showed you my shot cycle. I go through it. My mind knows what needs to be done. All I gotta do is do it. So I'm at 20 yards. We know my gap for this bow is 12 inches. Now it's not cut to center, so my arrow's not gonna be on line. It's gonna be slightly to the left. If I have good back tension, got my hooks in, and I do a proper release, I should make a good shot. If not, then I just go through my little checklist that tells me why I didn't, you know? I, I can't tell you why people have it. I can just tell you, hopefully, why I don't. Not bad, a little high. All right, here we are. You know, you make it wide open, make them small. It's not a big target. Uh, 25 yards, turkey, means six inches low. Let's see if we got it. Hey, turkeys aren't easy. That's not a big target. I might have clipped an ape. All right, for me, as you've seen, it's about, it's about this, that back tension. When I mess up, I relax and then my body collapses in and I lose slightly uh, some draw weight. All right, having fun. Um, if you're here, just watch 26 to 27 is hard to find. You go back down by the road and you come back and you'll find it. All right, let's go on to the next one. Nice little shot here. That little bear. Uh, big penalty if I miss, a lot of rocks behind it, which I like penalties. Make a shot, all I gotta do is make it. Work your shot cycle. Can't tell you anything more. Whatever yours is, it is, but work it. If you didn't make it, ask yourself, what was I thinking? And then I'll tell you, I'm telling you, you'll be thinking, oh, my hand wasn't, there you go, that's why. All right, so this is 15 to 18. I'm gonna put about a foot low, let's see how we do.
that was sweet. Did everything right, drew back, got to my brace, held for just a barely a second, not much, but it felt so good, I said, well, you know what, let it go. All right, let's go up and take a look. All right, everybody, here we are, the last one. You know, thank you for joining me today out here walking around, talking about archery, and letting you know a little bit of how I do things. You know, just because I do it doesn't mean it's the right way. It's what, so far, is working for me. And I'm always changing and always modifying. Got two targets, both big, so they, they fool you on the range if you go visual. When I say visual, I mean like line of sight, using your stereoscopic vision to estimate it. But I'm putting the first one at 30 and the second one at 40. All right, so 30, we know it's point on. Now it just so happens I was out playing around at the range yesterday and for me to hit 40 yards, I'm almost three feet above it. But that'd be good for me today so I can uh, see if that, uh, what I was doing was right. All right, let's take my first shot. Remember, all I'm gonna do, exactly what I've been doing before. I got my stance. I'm letting my mind absorb the information, giving my mind time to process the information. Then I pick where I got to aim. Then I just work my shot cycle. And that's how you should do it, you know, but you got to have the shot cycle down before you can do all that other stuff. So be patient with it. A lot of guys that try a gap, quit. Well, I couldn't do it. But dude, you did it for like two weeks. You know. All right, point on should be where I want to be on the first one. Wow, dropped him low, dropped him low. I might have been off of my range. All right. The far one might be a little harder because those branches are in the way. You know what I'm gonna do? I don't think you can see it, but his antler, there's one sticking up. I'm gonna put it that height. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, baby, that was about right, three feet. All right. Let's see if I can do both again. Same spot. All right, let's try that far one. Oh, that was, that was real good. That's like eight or a 10. Now let's try this 30 yarder. Oh, went under. Well, didn't adjust right. All right. So, let's do a little trick here. Let's see what they really were. I wasn't bad. I said 30 and 40. It's 32 and 42. Not bad. I do have one arrow left. Um, shoot that one. I'm going to try that 30 yarder again. Just not hitting it like I should. Oh, that might be why. When I do point on, sometimes I put my point under where I want it to go, so it shoots low. I gotta cover, cover the spot that I want it to go on with the arrow. Right where I wanted it, how I wanted it. That's my problem with gap shooting, is I like to see where I want it to hit, so I always put my arrow on the bottom of it sometimes. But it has to cover the spot, and I forget that. Like I said, when I make a mistake, when I miss, I know what it is, and I can track it down and fix it. All right, boys and girls, that was the Monroe Chester Sportsman's Club. I shot from the compound stake, the white one, probably the hunter class. You seen how I did? Pretty darn good. I am very happy. Had a bunch of tens. That's what I'm always shooting to get. Got a couple twelves. Very happy with that. Had that one miss on that gator. Okay, 48 yards. I'll give myself a mulligan. Second one was a bullseye though, wasn't it? All right, I love archery. I like figuring things out. It's not something you can get good at overnight. So don't give up. One, get mental control of your, your archery. Get control of your shot cycle. Figure it out, write it down, practice it. If you're not getting the results you want, modify things. Make sure you got the proper equipment. My arrows are tuned to my bow. So I eliminated that veritable. And that's what you do. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
All right, you know the deal. Thumbs up, like it. Thumbs down, you didn't. Comments down below. Questions, feel free to ask. All right, and I'll see you next week with an all new episode of 3D Archery. And hopefully, I won't be alone. Mm. All right, everybody, thanks for joining, and I'll see you next time.